Good morning, and welcome to Washington National Cathedral on this Thursday, June the 20th. I'm Rose Duncan, Canon for Worship, and we're so pleased you decided to join us this morning for our service of prayer and reflection. Let us pray. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor become overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear these words from Psalm 97. The Lord is king. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees it and is afraid. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness and all the people see his glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you are the Lord, most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of his saints and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joyful gladness for those who are true-hearted. Rejoice in the land, you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. The reading comes from the sixth chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew, beginning at the seventh verse. And in praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask. Pray then like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father also will forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. In today's Gospel, Jesus is teaching his disciples how to pray. Using the Gentiles as an example, Jesus notes they believe more words are better than few, hoping that many words will bring them a favorable response from God. So Jesus teaches the words to pray. The Lord's Prayer is indeed a summary of the entire gospel. It is called the Lord's Prayer in that Jesus himself gave it to us as a way of teaching us to pray. In this prayer, we find seven petitions to God. And within those seven petitions, we find every human longing and every expression of faith found within the scriptures. Everything we need to know about life and prayer is contained in the Lord's Prayer. Many of us learned this prayer at a very young age. For those of us baptized under the 1928 prayer book, one of the responsibilities of our godparents was to assist us in learning the creeds, the Ten Commandments, and yes, the Lord's Prayer. I still have fond memories of sitting in a pew learning these things by heart with my godmother. One of the gifts of the Lord's Prayer is that we can pray it easily. 
The words are ingrained in our hearts and our very being, and they become part of us. But there can be a downside. It may become automatic. But even automatic prayer is still prayer if praying is our intention. Admittedly, there will be times when our minds wander and we may not fully be present to God as we hoped. So the challenge for us is to continually strive to be present when we pray. Thus, we may have to continually keep bringing our minds and hearts back to God. For those of us who pray the daily office from the Book of Common Prayer, at least once a day, it concludes a standard rotation of traditional prayers, including the Lord's Prayer, in every office, morning, noon, evening, and compliment, signifying the importance of this prayer to be repeated throughout the day. While some people might find it redundant and mindless, I find it can turn prayer into a dialogue with God. Jesus was praying truly to his Father, whom he knew intimately. Jesus also knows us intimately and walks with us each and every day. Today, may we pray the Lord's Prayer as one of love, of longing, and of praise. So however you pray, make it your priority. Give God your full attention, filled with love and praise. Amen. Let us now offer our prayers to God that this and all our days may be full of your praise, we pray to you, O Lord, that you will keep us this day without sin. We pray to you, O Lord, that we may walk before you in the paths of righteousness and peace. We pray to you, O Lord, that you will bless your people and lift them up forever. We pray to you, O Lord, that you will guide and protect us by your Holy Spirit and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. We pray to you, O Lord. And let us now commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, and your steadfast faith and love that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. May the Spirit of truth lead you into all truth, giving you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the wonderful works of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.